yes, I am a puzzle, but it is a hundred piece puzzle that I am busy placing in my life. So why am I here? Well, I'm placing a new and exciting piece into that puzzle that will eventually form my life. The privilege of walking onto the Sioux stage is actually the result of positive thinking, belief in myself, and these are all lessons that I've learned from previous pieces of my puzzle. I attended a CWI event several years ago and I heard about Sioux Talks. And I set my sights on being right here today because I heard that Sue was successful, unstoppable, and empowering. Whoa, what a challenge. And I love something new to challenge me. And so I also like to be a disruptor. And I hope that I might be able to disrupt what all of you might think that older women are capable of. But in order to know who I am, I invite you to walk down the path of several path, uh, past pieces of my life so that you know, because it's been 72 years in the making. Many years ago, I realized that my life actually was just like a big puzzle. And it would be filled with all pieces of a puzzle, and every one of the pieces would hold a lesson for me to use. Now, every one of the pieces would be different. They would be bright and colorful and rounded and smooth. Others might be jagged and dark. But every one of those pieces would have a place and would fit in. And all of the lessons that I would learn from those would help me with my family, my work, business opportunities, and just generally in my life. So the earliest pieces of my puzzle were placed when I grew up in South Africa. They were placed by my family and by culture. At the age of five, Mabel came into the picture and taught me, had added many well-rounded, colorful pictures. And she taught me so many lessons. And she taught me many songs, mostly in Kosa. And through songs, she taught me the love of our country and patriotism. And yes, you did hear me say our country, because she believed it to be so, despite the circumstances of the country at that time. She also instilled in me the African principle of Ubuntu, which is embrace all, embrace diversity. It's humanity towards others. Respect others and to always believe in who you are and also resilience in the way that she dealt with her life. She knew who she was. She was Mabel. She was Tosa, and she was South African. At the age of 10, some of the jagged pieces and dark colored pieces of puzzle came into my life. I had talked my parents into allowing my 13-year-old brother and myself to go horseback riding while we were on vacation. And in my enthusiasm for a fun adventure, we all overlooked the fact that we'd never ridden a horse before. <laughs> but my parents believed that our competent African guide would take good care of us and he would only lead the horses. This fun adventure turned out to have lifelong ramifications. And for years, I had a personal struggle. Was I at fault? Should I have not asked for this fun adventure? So after many hours of walking the horses to many African villages visiting his friends, we felt totally competent on horseback until the horses bolted when they caught sight of their barn. My brother was ahead of me and he was thrown off the horse, but his one foot caught in the stirrup and he was being dragged and five months later, he came out of a coma to lead a, a productive, but certainly a very altered life, always striving to do more despite his circumstances. So what I learned from him was to evaluate what I have and to use what I have to do more while I can, and also to always learn and do more. At the age of 17, 
Mrs. Stewart, one of the 20 patients in my care on the hospital unit that I worked on, came into the picture. Now, this lesson is so significant that I remember her name 55 years later. I was in the beginning of my nursing school program on my first rotation of night shift, and I found myself crying in the stairway, wondering what I had got myself into. I was exhausted. I was sleep deprived by working 12 hour shifts a night because it was hard sleeping during the day. And I was faced with the needs of all these patients in my care and dealing with medical issues that neither the other junior nurse nor myself had ever dealt with before. I felt totally unprepared and overwhelmed and I really wondered, could I really do this? I missed the security of my family and the freedom of being a child. It was 2 a.m. that morning and I had just taken the Stewart family crying to say goodbye to their mom who had suddenly passed away. Was I responsible for her death? Should I have known more? Should I have been better prepared? This was just all too much for me. I just couldn't handle it and I decided I was going to quit. As the family were leaving, they stopped to thank me for taking care of their mom. And this hit me like a ton of bricks. In their grief, they had thanked me? Well, this lesson became a turning point for me in my life because what I recognized was that I need to face changing life circumstances head on and to know that life will be different and it will be difficult and challenging at times. And I also learned later on how to let go, to evaluate pieces that I might feel responsible for and know when the blame is mine to shoulder. What I've learned also is that preparation and understanding of all aspects of any undertaking are essential and also to curb my enthusiasm until I do know what I'm getting myself into. And also, do you all know that lack of preparation will be the downfall of any undertaking? So at the age of 22, I married and left everything I had known behind me for a new chapter in my life. I left South Africa, my family, my friends, everything I'd known. And raising, married and raising three daughters in America was so different. And I thought, I don't know if I can do this sometimes because it was so challenging. And for so many reasons, not just one, many reasons, we moved 18 times. We weren't in the witness protection program. <laughs> so these 18 pieces of the puzzle taught me not to yearn for what was, but to embrace the new. So going forward, after these 18 pieces of the puzzle, we move, as I said, we moved East Coast, West Coast, Midwest, and every one of those moves was like living in a totally different country in every respect. What I learned from that was that the grass is not greener on the other side of the fence. It is actually greener on the side that you water. So following this principle, watering my grass, I have had the most extraordinary opportunities and experiences and met amazing people, all of whom continue to teach me lessons. And these lessons I used to start several businesses. I rose up in the ranks of the hospitals that I worked in. And I took good care of all my patients because I was always prepared. At the age of 55, I spent the next eight years working towards a goal that I had set my sights on. And that goal was not as easy as I anticipated it would be. But I kept working on that using 
many of the pieces of the puzzle that I'd learned previously. And talk about disrupting the norm. And at the age of 61, I did just that. All of those years and lessons paid off when I was selected to be on the TV show Survivor. And I was 61, and I've only been one of two women ever to be selected. They just don't seem to select older women. So I spent all those years learning what I was going to do, and I learned that all of, I, all of what I did learn would never be wasted because I could use it in the rest of my life. And also, the path that I had been on led me to a most unexpected gift. It was actually not to get on Survivor, but to get off Survivor and use Survivor for the benefit of so many people. Yeah, I was booted off second from that show. And at first I was devastated and found myself having a pity party in the jungle, boo-hooing and whining, why? When I suddenly found my why, I realized what I had in my hands. It was a way that I could use my new celebrity for the betterment of so many more. So I started walking in the jungle every day with pieces of this unexpected gift falling into place. I realized that now I'm part of the reality TV world. Yeah, me. And I could use that and my previous experiences to start a fundraiser. I could include other reality TV personalities and I could build it around my town and we could have this fundraiser for three days of unique events. So that's exactly what I did. I started looking for volunteers who would help me raise the much needed funds for Michelle's Place, which is a cancer resource center. Michelle was a young, healthy, adventurous young woman of 26 when she passed away because she was misdiagnosed with breast cancer when she was 19. While she was going through her cancer journey, she asked her parents if there would be something that they could do to support others. And eight months after she passed away, they opened Michelle's place. And in the past 18 years, they have provided over 150,000 no-cost services to those who seek their support. So my survivor was a televised game. Surviving cancer is reality. And fueled with this, the flame of the event that we created, Reality Rally, was ignited. And with passion and purpose, I started my journey to support them. And over the past 10 years, innumerable doors of opportunity and of experiences have opened. And together, we, from Reality Rally, have raised over half a million dollars for Michelle's Place. So, I smile when I think about how song came full circle when I was 55. I had just had a four-hour hike up to Table Mountain, which is 4,000 feet up, and I was getting ready to rappel 400 feet down when I noticed a delightful group of older African men and women dressed in their Sunday best, chattering amongst themselves, ooing and aahing at the magnificent scenery. And I asked them who they were, and they said that very proudly that they were a church group from Pretoria, and they had flown for the first time to Cape Town. And now they were up on this magnificent mountain, which they could share and enjoy at last. As I was about to leave, I heard lovely African voices singing and I went over and it was them, singing the songs that I learned as a kid. So they beckoned me, their new friend, to come and join them, to share in the love and joy and advantages of our country. Yes, Mabel, you taught me well. So, what's next? 
when will I place that hundredth picture, that hundredth piece in the picture for that final picture? That probably won't be up to me. But what will that picture look like? Who will I be? That depends entirely on me. Thank you.